Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this opportunity to be bringing his truth to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for this great opportunity to bring God's truth to your children. Lord, I don't take this for granted. And so I depend on you for the right utterance, even right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let burdens be lifted. Let yokes be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 7. We've been talking about the importance of tithing. Listen, tithing is too big. It controls everything. I was sharing with someone recently and I said, listen, why is it important that we hear the voice of God concerning where we should tithe? We bring our tithes to the Lord Jesus himself. Why is it important? Because there is no priest after the order of Mel uh, after the Levitical priesthood that we should give our tithes to today. No. When, when, when pastors say we are like the priest, it doesn't tally, it doesn't flow, it doesn't work. Why? Because that means every one of us have been made priest unto the Lord. Because God said, I'm building a kingdom of priests. That's what he told Moses. Moses told the if you work faithfully with the Lord, then he's going to make you a kingdom of priests. Meaning every one of you are going to become priests. Now, now in the book of Revelation, he says, he had made us. See, Revelation chapter 1. He had made us priests. A kingdom of priests unto the Lord. So every one of us are priests. But then we have our high priest. Praise God. Now, because we are priests unto the Lord, that's why it is, it is also legal so someone can bring their tithes to you. Say, me, I'm not a pastor. Hey, you're not, you don't have to be a pastor. Praise God. And, and let me also tell you this. You know, I was telling you, I've shared this every yesterday, I was talking about it again. You know, you take your title and then you go before the Lord and you ask him, Lord, what do you have me, what would you have me do with it? And then he tells you what you should do with it. Now, you don't, you don't necessarily need to go meet the person and say, God said I should give you my title. You don't have to say that. Well, it's not, if, there's nothing wrong if you say so, but it's in that moment you are giving it to someone else. It's no longer... A tithe you are giving because you have already given your tithe to the Lord Jesus Christ so the moment he tells you what to do with it follow me now you are administering his resources to this person you're not giving that person your tithe are you getting me you give your tithe to the Lord Jesus Christ he's your high priest he's the only one ordained today to receive tithes so you give your tithes to him and then when he instructs you you must wait for that instruction you know someone was talking to me you know also <laughs> he said pastor why why do i have to go through the stress of hearing god where to give a tithe why don't i like i trust you i trust you here god i trust you a man of god i'll give you my tithe and then i leave the burden on you to do whatever god leads you to do i say you are just being lazy sister <laughs> god. and you, you you are just being lazy you are just thinking of i just i don't want to stress myself i just want to be lazy but you see it is not just and, and this is the point it's not just about hearing God to give your tithe. It is a practice that brings you into a system of operation under the high priest of Jesus. So the moment you begin to hear him tell you what to do with your tithe and you begin to obey him. Listen, you've opened the door for him to speak to you consigning everything because it's the same voice are you getting what i'm saying so he will begin to tell oh thank you holy spirit he would 
He can tell you how to spend the rest of the money. You know, sometimes, oh, no, no, ah, no, God should not tell me. Ah, no. <laughs> Maybe you earn, what do you call little now? Whatever amount of money you earn as your salary, you're working somewhere and that's what you earn. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that can multiply that money. How? He can tell you what to invest in. He can tell you where to get things cheap. He can now also multiply what you have. But you start the journey, you start the process by diligently listening to him. Can you, can you just try to do that? What I'm telling you, I received I receive testimonies. Testimonies. You know, someone told me, said, sir, I, I decided to practice this thing you teach on tithing. And, and God spoke to me and told me who to be. I said, for the first time in my life, I was giving my tithe and I was so excited because I felt, hey, this is who God said I should give it to. That this is the joy of what we do. Praise God. That's the joy in it. The joy of hearing his voice. The joy. And, and let me tell you this. The moment you hear him and you obey him. Listen, your prosperity is certain. You know, I was telling you, I was telling you yesterday, you know, supposing what I was talking to someone actually. So supposing, supposing they come with the mark of the beast and we are still here. And they say, yeah, except you receive this mark. You know, you know the world has, when they brought out um, um, cards, bank cards, credit card, debit cards, they say, oh, this is the mark of the beast. If you receive it, it's the mark of the beast. So without it, you cannot buy and sell. Can you imagine? They are leaving money. You know, we keep going through those circles. We keep going through those circles. You understand? Now, watch this. But what if it is? I'll tell you this for sure. God will not let that happen without creating a way of escape for his children. God is not going to abandon his children to the hands of the evil one. Nah, never. He won't do that. Praise God. He won't do that. You will not be forced you will not be forced to take anything that you're not supposed to take. God will show you what to do. So it will now be your responsibility to believe and follow the Lord or to follow the world. It becomes your choice. But as for God, there will always be an option. That's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you right now. Get ready. Just start following the Lord. And let me tell you also, when, when you begin to tithe to the Lord Jesus Christ, what's going to happen? You know, I told you last week, you will be fulfilling what, what Solomon wrote in the book of Ecclesiastics. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. Give some to six or cast your bed upon the waters. And you find. He said, give some to six and others to seven for you don't know which one. He said, you realize today the Lord will tell you, give, give, give that money to this person. It's okay, thank you, Lord. I will. Tomorrow he tells you, give it to so and so. Oh, give it to that one. Give it to that. Now, the devil watching you cannot tell how you give. Now, this is the one thing Satan can never take charge of. He can never operate in that system. What system? The system where we hear the voice of God. He can never catch up with us. That is where we have an advantage over him. You talk about Bible, he knows the Bible more than you. You quote him. Jesus quoted scriptures to him. He quoted back scriptures to Jesus. But when Jesus said to him, it has been said to me, thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Satan began to cry. Where is that written? Genesis 1, 2, 3, 50, no. Exodus 1, 2, no. Leviticus, no. Numbers, Deuteronomy, all the way to Revelation. I can't find that written. Where is he quoting from? <laughs> Praise God. That, that, that's where... He went to rest. Because he doesn't know where you're quoting from. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
That's how we defeat it. So when he doesn't know how you're going to give, he doesn't know. You see, when, you know the way we give now, most, most people give their tithe in the flesh. That's what's going on. Yeah, give it, what, where do you give your tithe? I give it to my church. Why do you give it to your church? And that's where I'm being nourished. That's where I'm being fed. Who said so? He said, but the Bible said, bring all the tithe to the store. Who told you that's the storehouse? Even according to scriptures, your church is not the storehouse. And you're not the one he was talking to. Read the scriptures carefully. He was talking to the Levites. It is the Levites in the Old Testament that bring their tithes to the storehouse. Because the priests, don't, the Lord never commanded the people to give their tithes to the priests. The people give their tithes to the Levites. It is the Levites that bring their own tithe to the priests. So it is the Levites that bring their tithe to the storehouse for the priests. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, now then, when we give, you, you, you give in the flesh, and you're giving to your church, you're giving to your church, and then one day someone comes to you and says, do you know what they used to do with all our tithes? Say, no. Hmm. Let me tell you the truth. Pastor, you, I'm telling you because I have a, an insider. Pastor used all church money to go and do MMM. <laughs> you know? Or he used it for one business like that. That's what they do. You say, what? Hey. Ah. So that's what they are doing with my money. Yes. Hey. Hey. You begin to sit there and think, so that's how my, all my money just left. All my money is gone. What's Satan doing? He's attacking you. And he, he's, he's concerned about your receiving. He doesn't want you to receive. So he will attack you and attack you. You have a good relationship with someone. The person is the one helping you. Anytime you have a problem, oh, you just say, oh, I have any, oh, no, no, you know what? Just send me your account number. How much do you need? Oh, I just need 200,000. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. You have a good relationship. Maybe your parents, maybe your friends, maybe your brother, your cousin, your, your whatever, the, whoever the person is. Someone who's just helping you. And, and Satan looks at you, so I know how to attack this guy. Tamper with that relationship. And just brings a rumor. He says, so you mean, after all I've done for you, no, no, that's not what happened. That's, that's not real. Get out. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to see the relationship. He says, so what do I do now? And then you begin to go to churches, prophets. Yeah, I don't know. And the person helping me, Satan has gone to put an evil heart in the person's mind. You begin to pray all manner of prayers. It's because you've been dealing in the flesh. When you begin to give by the Spirit, how? You wait for the Lord to command you on what to do and where to give. Satan doesn't know how you operate. And guess what? That is exactly how you are laying up your treasures in heaven. Praise God. Yeah. How do you lay up treasure in heaven? When the Lord commands you to give here on earth, God tells you, hey, give 100000 from your tight account to so, so, and so. Maybe a pastor, maybe a ministry, uh, an orphanage, uh, anyone, anyone, hey, just anyone. I said, okay, sir, yes, Lord, I, I, I'll give. Guess what you just did? You just credited your heavenly account. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, that's what you just did. And it is sure because your stamp, not just like you go to the bank to pay in money. What do you come out with? The deposit slip. You have the teller with you as the evidence that you paid money into that account. Am I right? Yep. So his voice telling you, hey, give the money to so so and so. And you obey that voice is your teller. Stamp. Seal. You've got money in your heavenly account. Praise God. And guess what? You can withdraw that money anywhere oh that's the beauty about your heavenly account they can take you to the the driest desert on the earth and, and dump you there they just fly you there and say look you we don't know what to do with you anymore we throw you here if you survive thank god for your life if you don't survive bye bye and you you look around no water you look everywhere nothing you know what you do you say father i need to make some withdrawals <laughs> because you see the voice of God is there I need to make some withdrawals so, what do you want son I need water he said okay look to your left you remember hey guy lift up your eyes now she was she needed water her son needed water and God did not say 
walk one kilometer away to the left, you will find water. What did God say? Lift up your eyes and see water. She lifted up her eyes, she saw water. Oh, <laughs> that's how God can show up at the desert for you. In whatever situation you are, he can show up even right now. You are in debt. The landlord says he's coming to throw you out tomorrow. God is showing up tonight. He's showing up to you today. Praise God. And all he's going to do is say, make that call. Call so and so person. Look up. And it becomes so easy. You will wonder how. But that is why. Hey, because you've got a count in heaven. And all you need to do is to make withdrawals. Wherever you are, you withdraw. <laughs> oh, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. Ah, Your word is penetrating deep into everyone's heart. And there is an understanding of your truth. And as we begin to practice and continue to practice your word, <laughs> we find the truth indeed and we are set free. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.